this bucket. Antlers on antlers. Lots of deer. shoot a fucking buck. That's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. But, I'm with someone who's famous, and apparently, we have help on the way, which is a plus. Saving the day. We might not be out there opening light, but we'll get there, one way or another. Gotta keep the positive hunting attitude. Pretty big on good juju and I don't know if this is the best juju I've received in my life, but we'll see. It quite off today. <laughs> this is the least stressful thing I've done today. <laughs> so, September 4th, 10.52 p.m. How are we doing? September fourth didn't happen. Just had a little little trouble getting going, but makes for a good adventure. We're uh, sitting in an empty house, um, but uh, in grizzly country once again. Seems to be what draws us. Danger. <laughs> At least it's a house. Yeah, we got a roof over our heads tonight. We uh, are on the board with um, kills though. We. Uh, the truck took a deer tonight. Took it right to the license plate. And that deer's in heaven. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Then uh, get down the road another little ways and uh, we run into some more trouble. Steering wheel started doing, doing this number on me and sure enough, the tire, the suspicious tire, went flat. So, opening day is tomorrow. Quaid is shooter. Still got a bow on both. Um, we're not going to Dillon. And it's not even Billy's fault this time. But, we'll get to Bozeman, we know that much. <laughs> we'll get to Bozeman. We'll get to Bozeman. But, yep, yeah, so. Next time you see us, it's gonna be a little later than usual. <laughs> Not in the morning. We wanted to be up um, first light, looking at big, big critters. But, you know, it all happens for a reason. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Got a lot to... Uh, What's your take on the, the day, Quaid? My day just got a lot better after I got off of work. <laughs> I'm not even worried. He's been, no. he's been loving it. So like, oh... Hit deer, no big deal. It went from sleeping in the back of the truck on the highway to, oh, now we have a nicer place than half the places in Missoula. Yeah. <laughs> if you rented this little house out in Missoula, it'd cost, I don't know, $1,300 a month. Yeah. But we had a very gracious friend 
yeah. in the area that we're very thankful for. Yep, definitely own one. So. Or two. Yep. Absolutely. So tomorrow we'll get the tire fixed. And we will get to hunting. You know, I love hunting, but we hate walking. And we don't like flats. We might have to walk to the hunting spot <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta look for lots of bears. Lots and lots of bears out here, so. Um, heard one's a man killer. Cow killer. <laughs> we got a mountain lion on the loose that tore up a guy last year. You know. We're just out for blood. They're out for blood, so. You know. What can you do? It's all about evening the odds. <laughs> she said something about a killer rattlesnake, too, but. I don't know. They might have got it. Who knows? Might be pregnant. Might be another one. Yeah. So here we are. Somewhere in the middle of Montana. As usual. <laughs> Under a light. In an empty house. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> Not in a truck bed though. Thankfully. <laughs> Seven p.m. A.M. A.M. We're not off to a very good start, but we overcome obstacles, and we're back on the road. We have seen elk already. Heard bugle. And we gotta go find Quade's fucking headlamp that he already lost. I'm already losing shit. He's lost his phone about six times in the truck already. The help in small town Montana was very uh, impressive. Everyone asked us if we were carrying guns. We are in the, uh, we're on the... What did he say? Most populated grizzly, grizzly bear area. <laughs> yeah. And we're on the grizzly bear highway. So, hopefully we see bear. They're coming right out of Yellowstone, I guess. I don't want to see a bear. That's what happens I don't when you live in Bozeman. I do not want to see a bear. <laughs> we might see one though. So yeah, we're up and rolling. New tire. Good night's rest on a bed. Yeah. Just a little late to the day. It's cloudy though, so deer should be moving. Wade needs to be in the, within 50 yards. Gotta get him in close. We're kicking. We're alive. Don't have to work today. At least one type of work. We just pulled in. Getting all our stuff out. It's about 10 o'clock. A little late to the party. Quite the adventurous 12 hours there, but we made it. Got a deer tag and an antelope tag. Hopefully we can fill them both today. We're gonna go walk some coolies out and cruise the tops of them. See if we can run into something bedded down. But it'll be a good day. We're out now. Hang in there. We spotted a butt in the brush, but could not see its head or see if it was a doe or a buck. But it ended up being a doe.
Spotted. Lots of good beds and brush for them to hide in here, but we just need to find the right piece of brush. Just got here late, so we couldn't find them, watch them go bed, so we could just be looking in the wrong spots, but we'll keep searching. We'll have something on the ground. Don't be worried. I'm not. I'm worried. We've been getting attacked by Hungarian partridges all fucking day. Flying out of the woodworks. You take two steps, there's 80 of them. Grizzly bears. Have found some bear sign. Don't know if it was a grizz though. You think? Yeah, grizzly. Let me tell you, that wind is whipping right now. Get at it. Maybe go see if we can find an antelope for a while and then come back here and watch them go to bed or something. Watch them wake up. The witching hour. We'll see. Nice curls too. After spotting a group of antelope on public land, Quaid got ready for a Hail Mary stock because these antelope were out in the open. But uh, with a deer bedded, um, had antelope tag, so he went after it. This was a grain fire just caused by dry weather and wind. But uh, we saw the smoke and went to check it out. Pretty nuts. After chasing antelope, we went back to the deer spot to see if we couldn't glass anything up for the morning. tallest one we've seen. He's still in velvet. Yeah, he's a four by three. That's their little funnel. He has a lot of after watching this buck slowly feed towards us, closer and closer, Quaid started to get ready for a shot. I'd say. Yeah. And then he got to 200, and he was kind of up against a cliff face, between the cliff face and the rock, or the creek. creek. Once we seen that, he's smaller than the ones we were watching, but I was like, if he walks up, I, I'm gonna arrow that thing. And sure as hell he walked in, his range and range in. When he got close, the first range was probably at 72. I didn't want to shoot that. And then the shot I was looking for was at about 57. And he got a little, a little bit closer. He tucked himself up next to the hill. He was at 47. And all I could see was his head and his spine. He saw us right away. Yeah, he was big. But it's pretty, pretty crazy. He came all the way in, yeah. right under us, just sitting still, being quiet. Finally found some bucks, which was good to see. Some in velvet, some hardhorn. Yeah, but pretty good action. 
considering what happened last night and <laughs> getting a late start to everything. Yeah. Still got on them. But, you know, got a plan for tomorrow, so just got to fight the bears off tonight. The skeeters. Eat some grub, catch up, yeah. find some rest, wake up and go put a stock on one of them. We've seen a shooter for sure, for me at least. So, yep, we got a hit list buck. We'll get on him tomorrow. And then we'll be having loaded Coronas all the way home. Actually, not till we get to Missoula. Don't ever drink a loaded Corona. <laughs> I don't know who invented that, but they were on they were on the devil's side. Yep. Good night. The next morning we headed back out to our glassy knob, hopefully bed down a good buck and make a good plan so that we can make a stock on one and get a shot. That's a four point little spindly four point but he's a four with the hook and then a little four a velvet four and the three with the hook Look at that, he just fucking bosses that guy out of there. Just get out. Behind here. Uh, we don't know if there's a doe in that little coolie though.
soon as we went to go make a move on this single, doe blew us out, kicked up probably 30 deer. We got a little three by bedded in a coolie that we were walking up. Jumped him at 36 yards, no shot. And uh, yeah, morale was down after that. came around this one little hill and Tyler spotted one of the big bucks bedded down oh what do you think probably 300 yards 300 yards and we couldn't see anything else by it so we backed off we kind of threw a plan together and really tried staying out of the skyline on that one and uh yeah initially the wind was in our favor and the way it ended up happening we thought the i thought the wind was gonna smoke us on that deal but by the time we closed in on it the wind totally changed directions and it was still in our favor <laughs> <laughs> and uh crawling up to it Still bedded at 60 yards, and we had sagebrush to hide behind. Couldn't see any of its vitals. All we could see was the antlers. And it was that tall three point with the two high forks. And uh, sat there for 10 or 15 minutes. Should I take the shot? Should I take the shot? Just couldn't see it. Couldn't yeah, see it enough, good. so I was trying to kind of get a little bit closer. Moved probably six feet. And then he looked at me and said, no way, Jose. Got up. Didn't even turn broadside. Didn't, no chance in hell. Today was rough. We had probably... Oh, 15 to 20 different bucks in sight by 10.30. Then it was a chasing game. <laughs> so we circled around the whole property damn near <laughs> on the heels of those two bigger bucks we were looking at. Kicking up deer left and right the whole way. Just not in the right place or the right time. 
And so we got up top, both ran out of water and zins. <laughs> and we said, well, those bigger bucks might be down this way. So we start kind of side hilling another set of coolies and the sun was pointing down north so the south facing or the north facing slopes had a little bit of shade and we so that sucks it was the second biggest deer we seen today we couldn't find any of the other bucks that were with them but they're probably in there somewhere Got a cold front moving in. Yeah, it's going to get cold tonight. And, uh, yeah, we're going to, we got to, we got we to make it happen. We got to make something happen. I can't keep picking flowers, man. <laughs> I'm getting sick of it. I'm going to get a weird <clears throat> invasive species disease from picking flowers. <laughs> got to bring home the meat. I don't know if we don't have something closed in by like two o'clock we're going to look for an antelope if it's not snowing <laughs> even if it is snowing something needs to, something's got to give that was a rough day a lot of action but that was a rough, rough long day. things just were not working out <laughs> well, stay at it